Welcome back to Dark Horse Sports Cards. You have myself and Sage here for another video. And today we are going to be doing an eBay review. So Sage, tell the people what exactly is going down. So as we've been opening cards, we've been keeping some cards and we've been listing some cards on eBay. Uh, some comments have come through and they said they want to see how they're doing on eBay. Well, first, we also do financial reviews after some box openings. We've been opening a lot of a lot of product. Kelsey has been pulling a lot of hot fire. And you too, dude, you get some credit for pulling that CJ Stroud for sure. And yeah, uh, it's the only card I've pulled worth noting. Yeah, but uh I'm Kelsey's just pulling bangers every single video. <laughs> People are gonna start thinking that we uh delete content. <laughs> Trust me, we do not. I'm the financial guy. Every single box that we pay for <laughs> is uploaded. Uh, yes. But yeah, and I just wanted to kind of talk about the state of the channel and kind of get into that. I think that um, we got a lot of content, a lot, of get, a lot to get through. But after each, what I was saying is after each video, if it's a bigger video, we put some time and effort into reviewing some of the cards and comps. We want to keep some of the cards. We sell some of the cards. So this video is to review how we did on eBay compared to our comps. So let's just jump into it if you're ready. Yeah, let's do it. I'm excited about this one. Okay. So right off the bat, we have some honorable mentions because these are some of the polls that came in videos where we didn't do financial review on. So we pulled that Steve Young to attend the Rasheed Rice autograph, the Patrick Mahomes heroes front, and then the Brock Purdy red, red proof. Is that what it is? Yeah, um, red proof. Yeah, and these were some of the bigger Press cards that red. that we sold on eBay, and I don't know. I was I was a little shocked by how much Steve Young went for, but he I mean he has a all time great. Patrick Mahomes always sells. Bra Brock Purdy always sells. We're learning that, and then Rasheed Rice. That was a little lucky uh, that that one because, as you are all well aware of, depending how they play on the field, people will buy will buy their cards or bid on their cards. We just so happened to have the auction right around the game where he was going off. Perfect timing. He should have had another touchdown, honestly, but there was a really bad block in the back call. I didn't like that call. He should have had another touchdown. <laughs> uh, I mean, he's absolutely filthy. So yeah, that was, that was definitely great timing for us. And anyone that invested in his cards – are probably going to be doing pretty good next yeah, year. Yeah, and they're definitely hoping he's got another big game and then continues yep. to uh, dominate and wins the Super Bowl. Yeah, if you have any football card investments, you want them to win the Super Bowl. Okay, so those were some honorable mentions. And then I wanted to start with the little cards. All the cards that we predicted would go less than $5. And that is oh, here. Okay. okay, so there's a lot here. Don't get overwhelmed. But the prediction I'm column here, can you see my mouse? I don't know. Yes. Okay. So the prediction column here is our prediction. The sold okay. price is what it actually sold for. And then the difference, that's what we're going to focus on. So where did we get things right? Where did we get things wrong? So I love this. Uh, Starling Marte, auto, black chrome. We said $5. We were depressed about that autograph. <laughs> and it sold for right near $20. So we were oh way off. Gosh. So I don't know. It, <laughs> way off. <laughs> I didn't think like a fifth year autograph of a good player would be, uh, would sell well, but I guess there was just some sort of bidding war and New York people are built different. You know, it's like 20 bucks to a New York person. They, they that's just like barely the cost of doing living. Right. Is, uh, I mean, it's a carton it's of milk cup for of coffee. 20, but yeah, a cup of yeah. coffee. Yeah. There thank you. you. Um, so Anyways, CD Lamb, and you called me out on the CD Lamb one right when I said it. I said, hey, these five will probably go for about 25. And you were like, hey, the CD Lamb could do 15 by itself. And I was like, yeah. I was like thinking, unlikely. Cowboys dude, fans are crazy, man. That was, Cowboys fans are go hard. Yeah. So that was a great. And then Vladdy, the Bat Relic, another old Hall of Famer. I got no respect for the. For the Hall of Fame old cards. <laughs> or the rookies. You yeah. don't respect the rookies either. No, I respect the good rookies. <laughs> and then Trey, Trey Lance. I did a bunch of comps on him, and it was supposed to go for $2, and it went for $8. <laughs> so proud of the Trey Lance. And then the Volpe is a Yankee shortstop. So that was okay. good. 
And then a couple of eBayers are Bears fans and New York fans, and they bid on all the Bears stuff. So shout out to them. And they, I think they really helped some of these Bears go for a little bit more. And uh, I don't know about like Evan that. Hole. Do you remember pulling that guy? We were like rookie running back, $8. That was pretty yeah. good. And crazy. Uh, going through to the bottom, um, Rainer Arias, transforming talent. I looked after I listed it and I did not put the name in the auction. So I thought it was go for three. I just put the number and I put San Francisco Giants and it was too late. You can't change the title. So you, and after it's already has a bid. So I was like, maybe somebody will find it. So maybe that was my mistake there. Uh, well, definitely my mistake, but so we lost two bucks on that one uh, compared to what I thought it was going to go for. And then AOC, yeah. I don't know. I put AOC WTF because I wish I would have saved that card. Only selling that for two dollars? That's a rookie quarterback. Why did we get rid of that? I, I don't know where the AOC hype is. And uh, so, anyways, th- let me take you through the rest of the spreadsheet here. Uh, you got shipping. That's how much I paid to ship the card. Materials. Okay. That is the bubble mailer and the hard case and the sleeve. And then the eBay needs their portion, so they take a percentage. And then the profit is on the right. So let me explain because I'm a finance person, you're a finance person, but profit is very weird here because you don't have a cost basis. And that's what I wanted to talk about a little bit is when you go and buy a card on eBay, buy a specific card, we bought the CD lamb. We know how much we spent on that CD lamb. So we have a cost basis. Then when we sell it, we'll have a profit to a cost basis. Well, it's impossible to have a cost basis when you put money into a, trading card box, open the box, all the cards are everywhere and you're saving some, you're pulling some, right? Like we have a cost basis in the Prism hobby box that we popped the CJ Stroud, which is now worth, let's yeah. just say $2,000. So what's the cost basis on the Evan Hull, right? Like it doesn't make sense. It's not a real thing for, for our style here. So the profit column should be just read as like, that's how much we got for that card after fees, shipping and material. Not anything gotcha. to do with what we spent on the card because that's just an analysis we can't do right now. In the future, what I'm hoping to do when things start slowing down, when we caught up on some of these videos and these box openings and uh, is do like a total spent on all the boxes. Uh, you're mm-hmm. saving all your receipts. We have every single dollar spent. Total collected on eBay. Total comps of all the cards in inventory, and then we'll see a bigger financial picture for the challenge for the okay, not, for the sense. channel. So, but for right now, it's just we made we made nine dollars and sixty cents by selling that Vladdy Bat Relic with a cost basis of zero. So that's how much we got back. So we got one hundred eighteen, gotcha. and so from this, you can see I was a little low on my prediction. I predicted these twenty nine cards one hundred and eleven. So maybe I'm being a little too conservative because we're able to sell them for one hundred eighty four. But then, oh wow! Okay. After all the fees, one eighteen. But I wasn't trying to predict. You're pretty close. I, yeah, but I wasn't trying to predict after you're the just, fees. So I was you're way going off. off of what the eBay. Yeah, you're going off of what the eBay was. Okay. Okay. So that's so that's this slide. So moving on to the next one. This next slide is the five to twenty dollar slide. So five to twenty dollar cards. So this the guess price was here, and you can see right away ninety four, and it sold for ninety four. So we were right on with our middle tier prices and i think you made Mm. the point earlier the bigger cards are more predictable because they don't have these weird spikes right so yeah you're not gonna have a card that sells that sells a bunch for 80 (laughs) all of a sudden sell for 120 but you could have a card that sells for two sell for six and then that's a massive difference exactly exactly so the 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 Santa box that we opened, we got that two out of 10 Formula One card, Daniel Riccardi. Crazy. Yeah, and Crazy. it sold for 20 bucks, and uh, we predicted 13. So, and then now you'll see this promotion fee coming in here. You can pay a small fee. You know this, but I'm telling the audience. Scam, <laughs> scam. To, to have eBay push your card out in other listings. So if somebody lists like uh, Formula One, our card would pop to the top of the list and then they would click. And if you're searching eBay, you'll see some like, why are you showing me that? And it'll say sponsored, right? So you'll start to see them as you use. Um, But yeah, who knows how much that really helps. 
But uh, on some of the cards recently, Brody's saying scam because they haven't been driving too much traffic. So we get like one view. We got like one view. I I, I want to save our judgment for the end of the auctions and t- until okay. We see. All right, we'll wait. Yeah. We'll wait and see. Uh, the Metcalf that was that did pretty good. I comped that at eight. That Panini box. Instead of losing 300, we only lost 280 or whatever it was. So we did a little bit better. And then Otani is always selling. There's always a market for Otani. That's crazy. And then um, I just want to talk about the combined shipping. When we get somebody that buys more than one card, it is amazing because you get to really combine the shipping and uh, the materials. So that Jackson and Wyatt DDPs, that is two cards. And the same shipping cost is $63. So shout out to that guy who bought them both and you get to really save on shipping. So when you buy five cards, six cards from us, uh, it really helps us uh, with with saving some costs on the shipping. Mm. And then, and then uh, the last thing I wanted to point out here is bulk is hard because we listed a 20 card lot at the bottom there, 17 rookies that we didn't really care about too much and three silver prisms i thought like a dollar a card was reasonable but no we sold it for 1250 but here's the thing is that 20 card pack i got a ship and it's over three ounces so it qualifies for the next shipping so i had to spend four dollars on the shipping and so now we thought we sell for 20 we got hit from all angles here we got rid of it for 1250 then we had to pay the four dollars on the shipping then Yikes. materials materials are a little bit harder because i had to use a couple extra cases and then ebay wants their fee and i my strategy was to promote it because nobody's really searching lots or like random rookies i didn't want to put all the names in the listings so i wanted to promote it so we made four dollars and 36 cents off of 20 cards and so like 27 cents a card yeah so i don't know i kind of <laughs> i don't know if i we might be done on lots yeah. we might be done on lots. or i need to measure out the lots and keep them under three ounces is what i was thinking too because if that was 63 okay. cents shipping and i could have got away with that or a dollar shipping then it would feel a lot better also i just think that auction didn't do very well i don't know but uh, maybe the titling or something uh, i don't know yeah yeah that's it that's an interesting one okay that's a tough one so but the gas price and the sold price, 24 cents off. That's insane. That's pretty good. That's really good. And then uh, we, we were able to get $63 back from these these cards. Puka's in here. We didn't talk about him because look at that. Predicted 15 is sold All for 1550 So that's pretty cool. All right. I stole this slide from the other one. This is the two Prism Autos. We were I got a little freaky with, with these ones because we were not close on this. I thought 60, it went for 42. I thought 30, went for 10. Uh, I don't know what comps I was looking at. I can't remember, but uh, yeah, apparently. I kept I kept waiting for the Deontay Banks because the Jaron Hall one kind of blew up really early on. Yeah. And no one was bidding on the Deontay Banks one. So I was kind of like waiting for like something to happen with that because you, you did comp it at 30. And I, at a certain point in time, I was just like, Nothing's happening. this nothing's happening yeah this this card is this card is dead to me yeah and then uh the two big cards that we threw on here and the two jerseys so this is the last jerseys slide. wow the jerseys uh we got those from chicagoland breaks we didn't have to pay anything from them and we opened them remember we're like what is this and maybe we shouldn't have opened them from the bags but whatever we did and yeah. uh quinn ewers went off and unfortunately lost, but it was good timing for that jersey. And that sold for $108. So the shipping and the materials are a little bit higher there. We went and shipped that together and we like didn't we weren't that prepared for a box and they're like five dollars for a box. We were like laughing, like, oh my gosh, if we just had a box, we would have saved so much money. But we we're like, whatever, we gotta get to the Raiders game, so let's just get these boxes off. So yeah. So uh we probably could have done it a little bit cheaper, but um we ended up profiting 74 and then Altuve 35 and then the Zach Thompson gold auto. That was the black autograph that we got out of 50 sold for 13, another one to 99 of the same exact thing, but number to 99 sold for 13. So that's how I comp the Yikes. 35 because gold is usually better. That was way off. And, uh, and then Zay flowers, silver flashback that disappointed us. I put that as a 30. I- 
dollar card. I thought that was a yeah. I thought that was a pretty good card to pull. Yeah. So I am I am a little perplexed on what that is. I mean, Zay Flowers has got to be one of the top rookie prospects. That's not a yeah. quarterback. The only thing I was thinking so, about that, and I put it on the slide, was. Maybe the Baltimore hype was dying down a little bit on their bye week. And also Zay Flowers mm. didn't have like any amazing games going up into the season because Ravens were kind of playing it conservative. So maybe the hype is down a little bit on Flowers. We should have waited for their playoff. For game. him to blow up in the playoffs and or list it mm. coming up to the playoffs with the hype. So yes. anyways, that was the only thing I could think of. But there's a lot of that makes Baltimore sense. fans out there, and they're bidding up on the Tucker, right? So it's like, I don't know. Uh, I, I don't know if that's in my head. So here's the summary. A couple things I wanted to touch on. Uh, it was about 475 cash back from this, which is going straight to the channel. Straight. Well, it's already been pre-spent, right? <laughs> but <laughs> it's going to reimburse us for some boxes or more boxes, however you want to look at it. And I just estimated, I can't really think about it. I didn't track my time because it's, it's fun for me to do the listings, the photos and the packaging. The one thing I learned on this is that the pictures are hard to take. I'm still trying to figure out the pictures, the zoom, the glare, eBay's tough, man, but uh, packaging and I've had some experience packaging on eBay before, but, um, and getting the listing, like I missed that guy's name, right? So there is some time and effort <laughs> to go in there. So I just assumed like 20 hours of work into this and that's worth it to get the 475 back uh the the cost basis issue we already talked about that um some some of and this is kind of just i wanted to go over a general overall picture brody you and i talk about this all the time outside the channel but just letting the viewers in on a little inside baseball like uh we were thinking we were thinking initially let's keep a ton of the cards we want to build this inventory. And now we're like, we'd rather open more products, sell cards, open more things, and just keep our, our really important ones to us. And, uh, and, but we're, and then grade some, keep some, grade some. So we're always trying to figure out the best way for Dark Horse Sports Cards to do an inventory. And uh, we'll give a general overall picture. But one thing that people ask me, specifically on that Shroud, is they were like, so, so is that Brody's card? And I was like, no, well, listen. So one thing I want to clarify is like Brody and I are in this 50-50 on all the cards, all the boxes. So when when you when I see Kelsey pulls some Warren Moon autograph, I'm going nuts because that affects my pocketbook, right? So I love the hot fire coming out. And I gotta start contributing and pop some pop some packs at some point. But uh in the meantime, I'm just I'm I kind of run the eBay, the finance side of it, and Brody kind of does the YouTube and uh has been doing a lot of the openings with kelsey so it's been great but uh we're both in this i won't say our exact number yet we'll save it whatever but we're both in this financially together and everything we sell on ebay we split 50 50 too so that's a little update and uh yeah and i'll say too just with the inventory i think what we're trying to do is we're trying to get to a spot where we feel a little bit more comfortable about saving cards yes. for our personal collection. Yep. Um, with where we are right now, we have we have a lot of product to open still, which is great. It's awesome. And we did get monetized fairly quickly on YouTube. However, the the money coming in on YouTube, and I'll be I'll be honest with you guys, the money coming on YouTube right now is about fifteen dollars for a video. So if you kind of do the math there with what the views are right now, now obviously Kelsey's pulled some absolute bangers in these last couple of videos. So maybe those go off a little bit more, but if you have an okay video right now, you make about $15 off of YouTube. So if I open two blasters that are each 25 bucks, that's $50 for that video for me to film it. We, we, uh, we make $15 off of YouTube. That puts us at $35. So we need to make $35 off those cards. And if you kind of look at what we just did with what Sage just pulled, we might make, I mean, obviously sometimes you might make yeah. that, but you might make only, you know, we might lose 10 bucks on making that video. Yeah. So right now we're really in the growth stages and you guys, the subscribe, the subscriptions have been going through the roof, which is awesome. We love it. 
Uh, you guys watching the videos? That is awesome. Hashtag Tadpole Gang. <laughs> all our tad, uh, all our Tadpole people out there. We really appreciate you. Yes. So as as the channel continues to grow and and that happens, uh, that all gives the ability to keep more of these cards long term. Yeah. So that that's the goal. Just to give you guys a little bit of an insight. Yeah, and we like doing this. And Brody, you spend a ton of time on YouTube and editing and putting all of this. It's not as simple as that because then the time of the packaging, the listing, right? It's it's yeah. our time effort too, but we love doing this so far, and uh, and we appreciate all the support for sure. And uh, we'll see. Where yeah, we're not goes. we're yeah we're not trying to create this. Uh, that's the big thing is we're not trying to create this as a business. Uh, most businesses that you go into, you're trying to create it to generate money like as soon as possible where we're actually going into it saying like, we're just trying to like break even. Yeah. If we, if we just have this channel in like five years from now, it's still a break even situation and it allows me and Sage to open packs for free. That's, that is, that is awesome. Yeah. That is yeah. now, obviously if it gets bigger than that, great, but we're not designing this channel to make money as much money as possible. We want, we want this thing to be yeah. sustainable long-term. Yeah. Behind the scenes when we're talking offline, it's like, dude, if we make money, we'll be able to buy a, a prism hobby box. No problem. And they say, if we make more, we'll do a case. Like we don't care. Like however yes. much we make, we're just going to do that much, that, that much yeah, uh, we'll more, keep and opening bigger. more. And like Panini's releasing a product every freaking couple days. Right. And it's like, if we had a little bit more, like we've already spent a lot of money, but if we just had more income, it would be like, we're getting that, we're getting that, we're getting everything. Yeah. So yeah, well, I'm excited to see where it's going. Uh, keep our expectations low though, and our dreams high. Anyways, if you have any ideas of where you want to see financial breakdowns, eBay, and if you're an eBay expert, put it in the comments. I'm always looking for tips and tricks. I'll reach out to you because I'm still <laughs> learning too. So, or sports cards uh expert too we always like to read your comments and see some maybe a professional photographer yeah too. exactly <laughs> exactly uh every time an auction goes low bro he's like it was the picture i was like i know <laughs> i know it was my it's my terrible picture it was too blurry uh, uh, to be fair if we did if we uh, didn't have the youtube and like you guys uh buying a lot of our cards i don't think a lot of our cards would have sold oh hey janice i don't we were just talking about you I don't think a lot of our car cards would have sold. Uh, she just got back from practice. I don't think a lot of our cards would have sold because the photos at the beginning were so bad. <laughs> I was like, Sage, I was like, Sage, these photos compared to these other people, mm. like no one, no one's clicking on this super dark photo. Mm -hmm. And to be fair, I had to send the, the Wimby that we have for sale, which I don't know if it, I guess this video will go up live tomorrow. Yeah. Um, so I guess the Wimby will still be for sale. I was the one that had to take that picture and I didn't freaking realize the holographicness of these cards. Uh, you could just see my freaking face smiling, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> taking the photos. So, uh, I hats off to Sage. Cause I, I, when I first saw the photos, I was like, dude, these photos are trash. What are you doing? <laughs> and then when you actually try it yourself, you're like, wow, this is actually really tough. So, yeah. um, yeah, but yeah, th it's been a fun, honestly, it's been a fun couple weeks doing, uh, doing the openings and stuff. I know me and Sage have a couple big openings that we'll try yeah, to probably wanna, get on this weekend. Do you want to spoil any of those or like tease any of those? Yeah, we can tease. So we have we have uh, probably one of the most requested boxes um, that you guys have been sending in to me is the Origins box. And I don't know why. I probably should do a little bit more research on some of these boxes. It, it's seven cards, Sage. <laughs> Hey, I like that from an inventory perspective and an eBay perspective. <laughs> I know you do. Yeah, I know you do. But I, me and Kelsey love ripping packs. And so the idea that this box, I don't even think this box has a pack. It might have a pack. Yeah, I don't um, know. But when it, when it came in, I was like, oh my gosh, I didn't. I should have read the fine print. Seven, <laughs> seven cards. So Go that's slow. two autographs. Go slow, Kelsey. <laughs> that's, that's, uh, that's two autographs, one memorabilia card in there. So that will be a really fun rip. Then we have um, we have the new retail that's come out for Walmart, which is twenty four packs from uh, for for Prism Football. Oh, so that will be really interesting. That that has the I think there's three or four of the black and white checkerboard cards in okay. there, 
And then you also get uh, green. I think it's like a green prism um, that comes out of there, a, a green parallel, okay. I guess. Um, so that will be a really fun one. Uh, Sage, do you have any anything that I, you I have coming say, up Target, that you're excited Target about? Target dominated Walmart on the release date of that then, huh? They were out a couple weeks early. Yeah, one of them did. But we do have our first, uh, we've been opening all of our Prism retail right now has been Walmart. And Sage just got our three mega boxes from Target yes. and our three blasters from Target. So in. those are going to be, those are going to be the pink parallels yes. where uh, Walmart was doing the laser parallels or prisms. Yes. I, I, don't know I got exactly a lot of pressure when I open them. If I, if I open a dud, everyone's gonna be like, Kelsey should have opened it. <laughs> and I'll be like, I know what yeah. was I doing? So I got a, I got a lot of pressure. <laughs> yeah. I, again, every, like Sage said, everything we open guys, we, we're going to keep this channel as transparent as we possibly can. Um, especially the more I dig in and more I watch, it really is sad that, so many people take advantage and i don't know maybe that's maybe that's par for the course nowadays yeah. like anywhere any any little uh crevice you go into yeah. in the business well, they're world, just trying to make money trying taking to make advantage money as much as they can every single thing but that's just not our channel so we got we have an advantage we have an advantage there but i'm just saying like i i this the the amount of scamming and yeah. ripping people off and stuff Again, maybe that happens everywhere, but it's a little bit more um, visual here because you have to kind of, you kind of have to scam people right in front of their face <laughs> for it to for it to work, I guess. Um, but yeah, so we're gonna try to be as transparent as possible. Every box you see us open, uh, that's what it is. We've just been on a, a slightly of a hot streak, and I, I would love to tell you, like, wait, we've got some duds coming up. We don't. Kelsey continues. We've got a couple more videos coming up where Kelsey continues to get case hits somehow um but who knows maybe we open this origins box that cost us 300 bucks and we just get seven duds no that's not happening i, I not hope acceptable. i hope that's not the case but i hope it's not the case but it might be um another video that might be coming out is the process of psa grading so be on the look at that we are sending in right now we are sending in our cj that's Stroud. what i was gonna say i'm putting that in the mail tomorrow which uh so and so that'll be our first graded car yes and that cost for the people how much is that costing us to do cut the well psa grades the cards based on how much you predict the price to be after the grade it's 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 crazy oh so wow uh i predicted it would between be between like the 500 and the 2500 hundred dollar bucket which is 75 dollars a card and then okay. you have to do shipping which i estimated 20 dollars insured shipping so it's going to cost us about $95 to grade that. If we get a 10, I would imagine it might add $1,000 to the card. <laughs> oh, man. So we will, uh, we will definitely be recording the reveal. Sage and Allie, who is uh, Sage's wife, they will be the ones that will do all of the grading reveal. Yeah, we'll see. Is... You might be in town. We might be able, we might be able to all four do it together. So we'll see. Maybe that would be sick. But some might some might say that that might be a more pressure reveal than actually opening packs. Yes. Oh, it, it, it because, is because because you know for yeah you know for a fact like the difference between a nine and a ten is hundreds of dollars. Yes. So yes, that could be great. But um, all right. Well, hopefully you guys are enjoying all the videos. Like I said, if you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe. If you like these financial breakdowns uh, or these eBay recaps, I don't know what the Maybe you guys will come up with something for this video as far as like see how good Sage gets at comping. <laughs> um, yeah. we'll, we'll keep going. The, we'll keep going forward with these because I think these are fun to kind of go back and see, especially some of these cards to see if they flop or to see the ones that did better than we expected. But um, thank you guys all so much for the support. We really do appreciate it. We look forward to the next couple of videos, opening some more packs for you guys. Until then, have a good one.